Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Alice and today I'm going to be reviewing the Paul Rubens watercolor paints. So the Paul Rubens watercolor paints claim to be a professional watercolor paint set. I found them on Amazon. I am currently working with the 12 color set. However, I can't find the 12 color set available anymore. I can find the 24 color set, which retails for $39.99, as well as the 48 color set, which retails for $72.99. To compare prices across Amazon, the Windsor and Newton Cotman set retails for between $33 and $43 for 24 colors, and the Secura Koi set retails for $25.21 for 24 colors. In addition, the Van Gogh 24 watercolor paint set is going to retail for $38.82. The Paul Rubens set has 2,771 reviews on Amazon and it does have a five star review. In the watercolor set description, it says that it has ultra pure pigments that won't easily become muddy when mixed, high transparency, strong tinting, and excellent light passness ratings. It also talks about how they use extra fine gum arabic to create them to be professional grade, which produces paints that are easy to mix, light, fast, and permanent. It talks about how the watercolor pans can be removed and replaced individually, which is great. And it talks about how the set contains a mixing palette inside the lid, which is pretty standard. So like I said, I have the 12 set, but looking at the little card that came with my 12 set, it does state the individual pigments that each different thing is made up of. The majority of these are made up of single pigments with the exception of two different colors, one being a lemon yellow appearing color and the other being more of a pinky red. I am sorry, I don't have the official names of them, but the majority of them are single pigment colors. A single pigment color means that it only has one colored pigment that goes into it. The more colors of pigments that go into your paint, the more muddy it's likely to be because you don't exactly know the undertones of all the different colors that went into that paint, which makes it harder when you're mixing other paint colors to create a pure and bright color. Pigment-based paints are really important if you're looking at a professional grade paint as well because dye-based paints do not have as strong of a light fastness rating. Light fastness is how quickly the paint will fade when directly exposed to UV light and watercolor is known to fade in exposure to UV light, which is why it's recommended to not keep watercolor paints in direct sunlight and to make sure that you frame them using a UV protectant glass. However, these are pigment-based paints, which means a couple of things. First of all, they're going to be more light fast and the light fastest rating is actually listed on all of these paints. They range between the light fastest rating of six being the lowest and eight being the highest. The majority of them are eight. There's a couple of sevens and one six from the 12 set that I have. So you can access all their light fastness ratings, which is really great. I was surprised that these paints being pigment based were actually higher priced than both the Cotman and the Van Gogh and the Koi paints, which I believe are all pigment based. I do have my own opinions on those paints. I would rate them at Koi being the worst, Cotman being the middle ground and Van Gogh being the best for those starter kits. Um, and so here I am to talk about the Paul Rubens and where I think those fall in this. So First things first, the Paul Rubens I found significantly better than the Koi paints. The Paul Rubens are a lot more pigmented than the Koi paints and the biggest difference for me with these and the Koi paints was that they were not chalky. These paints do not have as much filler in them from what I can tell as the Koi paints do. I found them a lot more translucent which was really helpful when layering up my colors. When paints are made to be a beginner paint, even if they use a professional pigment, a lot of times to lower the price, a company will increase the amount of filler. Watercolor paints are very simple. They are made up of a pigment or a dye, a binder, in this case gum arabic, and then water. However, when creating paints to be cheaper, a lot of times companies will use fillers like chalk, which bulk out the paints and make them easier to cut into pans as well. For the cheaper paints, a lot of times they will increase the amount of filler in because that decreases the amount of pigment that goes into the paint and thus decreases the cost of production. So when you're looking at beginner paints and you're trying out paints for the first time, pay attention to how translucent it is. A good way to test this out is to draw a black line with Sharpie or some other water resistant pen and then paint over it with your paints. You'll start to see which paints are more translucent and which paints have a little film that you can still see over the black line. By doing this, I've been able to determine which paints of mine are more translucent and which paints are not. These paints were very translucent. They were also extremely pigmented. I was actually surprised when I found out that these were pigment based and not dye based because they had a very very, very bright pigment, which I don't always experience in pigment-based paints, especially those at a lower price point. 
For these ones, I was also surprised that they were pigment-based because they don't lift as well. But also, it's a, it's a pro and it's a con. Lifting is a pro and a con. Lifting is when you can remove the pigment from the paper by using some damp paper, um, scrubbing it with a brush, or lifting it off with um, a piece of dry paper if it's still wet. So lifting can be used to fix mistakes. It can be used to create light layers of color. It can be used to tint things. It's a really, really helpful and important technique in watercolor. However, if you have paint or paper that lifts too easily, it can make it hard to layer up colors because it will lift the color below. So you really need a good mix. For me, I would prefer a paint that lifts less because I work in a lot of layers. So a paint that lifts less for me is more beneficial. So I personally prefer prefer the fact that this does not lift as well as some of my other paints. Once you put that paint down, it stains the paper pretty immediately. So for me, this is a good thing for you. If you use a lot of lifting or you're prone to making mistakes and you really don't want to have to stress out about the mistake still being there and not being able to lift it out, maybe these aren't the best paints for you. However, I did find them surprisingly nice. Um, I have had these for a while. I've used them a couple of times and I did find them, like I said, to be very pigmented, to to be very translucent and to be very easy to work with. They stayed wet and nice and I really enjoyed the process of working with them. I do have a couple things that I do want to point out however. I've had these paints for a while. I got them at the same time as I got the Paul Rubens glitter paints and I do have a review on those that I will link below. Spoiler alert, they're amazing. They're some of the best glitter paints on the market. Now, uh, these paints I bought at the same time, so they are a couple of years old, and I have noticed some cracking on the top of the paints. When I look in at the paint pans, I see some cracking and some crumbling on the orange, the cadmium yellow, and a little bit on the red and the brown. Cracking just means that the paints are drying out a little bit. It's pretty normal for paint, watercolor paint to crack, and these definitely haven't cracked even half as much as some of the other paints that I have. For example, my Kiritake paints have cracked some of them to the point where they are not usable. However, cracking can be fixed by using some water and some glycerin um, and there's also some or, or honey, um, but don't use too much because otherwise they'll become too sticky and they won't dry properly. But like I said, this is a pretty common thing to happen in watercolors. The only other thing that I have to say about these paints is they are extruded paints. So that means they're going to have a little bit more filler than a paint that's poured. What that means is when they take the pan, the paints to make them into the pans, there are two different ways they can do it. They can take an empty pan, they can take paint from the tube and they can squeeze it essentially into the pan. It's not necessarily in a tube, but it's liquid paint being poured into a pan, similar to what would happen if you poured paint from a tube into a pan. For pressed or extruded paints, what they do is they have more filler and they basically extrude it out into a kind of block and then they chop little like pan shapes off that block. So it's going to have more filler so that it holds that shape. So because these are pressed extruded paints, um, that is an indication to me that they do have more filler than a poured paint or um, something like that. So that is just kind of something to keep in mind. Overall, I really like these paints, but I do feel like they have increased in price since I purchased them, and I'm not sure why the 12 set isn't able to be found anymore. I think the 12 set was a really good starter uh, price point for other people, and while I do like the paints, I'm not 100% sure if they're worth the price. The reason being is because I would rate these paints at a little bit higher than the Cotman paints, but I would still rate them as less than the Van Gogh paints. The Van Gogh paints are absolutely gorgeous and one of the best um, like starter quality, close to professional that I have personally found. And I do find them to be um, a little bit better than these ones, just in terms of translucency and pigmentation. However, do I think these are a bad choice? Absolutely not. I think these are a great addition to anyone's watercolor kit, especially if you're starting out. If these are in your price point and you're interested in these, not for example, the Van Gogh, I would definitely recommend them. I would definitely recommend them over the Koi paints by far. I would recommend almost every paint over the Koi paints. I really do not recommend those as a starter set. Um, and I would recommend these at a slightly, slightly higher, I would rate them than the Cotman, although I do still really like the Cotman. Um, I do find that these are a little bit less chalky for a beginner paint than the Cotman, um, just in my personal experience. That said, I do feel like Cotman has reformulated or something because I have found the paints to be better quality in recent years than I have found them to be in past years. So I hope this was helpful and gave you kind of an idea of whether or not these paints would work well for you. Um, if you don't value lifting, if you value paint that stays on the paper for a while, you value translucency and high pigmentation, and you're looking for a little bit of an upgrade 
inspired from your current paints, then I think this could be a great choice for you. I hope you liked this video and enjoyed seeing me work on this little mushroom fairy while I chatted about the paints, and I hope that you found it helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and definitely check out my channel for more reviews, videos, sketchbook tours, and things like that. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day, and thanks for watching. Bye!